Thank you, sir, for allowing me to raise a short duration discussion on the Rule 50 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business. Meghalaya and the State Assembly, which comes up in newspaper clipping, is a long time, dated 29 August 2023, under the caption Training Program on Potential of Natural Farming, sir. So let me correct, my title is Im, sir, not Lundok. You address me as Lundok. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Point noted and correction. I stand corrected. Thank you. Sir, this house has been discussed lots of important points and we have witnessed the uh, different issues that has come up today, which is very pertaining. It's like a wake-up call to this August house so that we will learn in future when the session will sit, especially to strengthen the legislation branch of the Megalian district. Assembly, that's my submission. Sir. So the other important issues has been discussed, whether it is the strength of the government, the weakness of the government, issues pertaining from ILP, national education policy, unemployment, border issue, environment concern, and other issues also, like the issues that have been taken up by the government in the past five to six years by the present MDA government with regards to agriculture, food processing, weavers, artisan, improved tourism, and other sector in the state. All issues that, have, that has been raised are all important. My intention to bring this short duration discussion is specifically on agriculture, one of the sector which is very important, which is the important component, considering the fact like the strength of the government and the people of the state. 75 percent of the people of the state still depend their livelihood on farming, shifting cultivation and terrace agriculture, a two major farming system which is very much prevalent within our state. Besides the two major food crops of rice and maize, the state is renowned for its horticultural crops like pineapple, oranges, lemon, guava, lychee, jackfruit, banana, etc. Many districts in the state producing maximum quantity of rice even though it could not meet the requirement which we are still depending supply from outside the state. District like Garo Hills, Ribohoy district is very where we can have the pineapple, which is very sweet and famous, even and has been showcased outside the state and even in international platform. Meghalaya is the second largest producer of ginger in the country after Kerala. Ginger is the major cash crop. For tribal farmer of the region, as it is used for culinary, flavoring in beverages, confectionery, pickles, and pharmaceutical preparation. The state of Meghalaya is also known for a large array of vegetable, both subtropical and temperature. Some of the important subtropical vegetables are cucumber, pumpkins, bitter gourd, beans, brinjal, and a variety of leafy vegetable which is present in many parts of our state. As per record, Megalia is one of the lowest user of chemical in agriculture using only about 70 to 20 kg of chemicals per hectare of land is being used in our state compared to other state of our country. Even in the present budget that has been passed in the recent budget 2023-24, where the Honorable Chief Minister have clearly stated about the Meghalaya State Organic and Natural Farming Policy 2023, and an amount of 25 crore has been earmarked for this ambitious program, which would make Meghalaya a natural leader in organic cultivation, even as 15,000 hectares of area in the state are originally 
certified and another 2,000 hectares are in the process of being certified. Meghalaya as a land of plenty, we know it as a land of plenty and blessed in abundance with all natural resources that we have, water and biodiversity. This readiness has given them not just an occupation to the farmer, but also means of livelihood to each and every household in our state, and also the way of life. That was in the past. In the new era, we have witnessed and observed that this richness has started to diminish. In this, in this continuous process, our potential resources of land, water diversity, get degraded, become unproductive and extinct to a large extent if we go as per record in different parts of state. I'm not against any developmental activities that have taken place or that will be taken place within our state. But simultaneously, we have lost our agricultural land with catastrophic effect on the farmer and environment. In any issue, there is always a merit and demerit. In any legislation that has been passed, in any policy, there is always a merit and demerit. As coal mining has definitely helped a lot for the resources of our state, at the same time, it has reduced our body field to barren, sterile, dead fallow land. Cement factory or other factory has destroyed our immutable orchards that with urbanization we have seen that agricultural land is always being sacrificed for any commercial activities. Even though I'm not saying that urbanization is bad. It is for the benefit of each and every one of us. If agricultural land goes in unprotected, then we will come that we will lose occupation livelihood, but also farm away of life. When we talk about natural farming, sir, organic farming, we must do something to protect the agricultural land by enacting certain laws and declaration certain agricultural land as special agricultural zone. Side by side, when we talk about agricultural, we have to talk about water because our state, there are patches of fellow land which needs to be provided with people with proper canal through irrigation. Very importantly, we have to protect our catchment area also. Can our you state please? is blessed with Sorry. just two minutes. Yeah, in two I minutes, will complete please. in two minutes. Our state is blessed with diverse biodiversity, as I said in my opening remark of plant species which is our very own traditional setup which has become as our food and medicine since time immemorial. This plant species has sustained our people from one generation to another generation by putting them in cultivation at a particular time as per their traditional knowledge. Seeds of this plant species have become the land races or the heirloom seeds used by our people till today. With the adoption of modern agriculture, the local variety of heirloom seeds have taken a second place in the rating as far as yield is concerned. However, the contribution to the overall benefit of the farmer from agriculture can never be ignored because whenever this modern variety fails, this local variety never fails. These are, there are hundreds and hundreds of local variety of cash crop because they are native to this land. If famine struck, this variety will be there to support the livelihood of our farmer, the need of the people for food. During COVID, we have experienced this and there are seeds and crop which build the immunity of people that time. There is a campaign in our country now for the need to conserve preserve and promote traditional indigenous food items for setting up seed bank at different level. Local seeds are climate resilient and so long we put them in cultivation, they will germinate to grow and develop. So we have seen there is a large conversion also from a paddy field to a fish pond 
this also is a matter of concern whether it is good or we need to know from the government about this issue also. So before I conclude, I would urge through this uh, note to the Honorable Minister in Charge Agriculture for the immediate setup of the seed bank for indigenous seed and traditional agricultural practice. Number two, for immediate need for agricult agricultural policy in the state. Number three, more awareness on organic and natural farming and more provision also in the budget. Lastly, the merit and demerit of converting of uh, paddy field into fish pond. This is my humble submission, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, if there are no members to participate sir. in there, <coughs> Minister Mr. Minister, please. Oh, please. Please be brief. I'm, the, I'll, I'm giving only five minutes. Yes, I'll, I'll be brief. Sir, thank you, Speaker. To supplement on the call attention, uh, on the short duration by Sri Meryl Bonsame on training program and potential on national farming. So I'd like to in indicate here in the house, so the areas in my constituency, we call it the Khan Ryu Shnong. It includes areas like Mopu, Omblai, Nongseng, etc. So these particular villages, they produce uh, oranges which are unique in the state as a whole. So my request to the department may be if they can have some sort of program to tag these particular oranges under the geographical indications so as to help the farmers, the producers in a way wherein they could market these oranges in the state or outside the state. Because uh, as, as we see now, oranges in the state, especially in the winter time, they come from many, many areas. And these oranges in Mopu area and Umlai, and Umlai area, they are kind of special in a way because the rates seem to spike up, especially in times of uh, where the supply is less. And to help these farmers, the cultivators of these particular oranges, I feel the government should take initiative to help these uh, people in order to tag these oranges so that they can market and help them in their livelihood. So that's my submission for this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Minister may reply, please. Honorable Speaker, sir, I am thankful to the Honorable Member from Nine Nongpo constituency for having raised this important issue on how government will promote natural farming in the state and also for highlighting the importance of engaging farmers to preserve indigenous seeds, indigenous farming and integrated paddy fish cultivation. <coughs> So I also thank the member from 26th Shela constituency, Babala Jait Sindram, for also talking about the importance of geographical indication for Khasi Mandarin. So I will try my best to conclude and to present my observations on the members raised by the honorable members at the earliest. Sir, farming in our state is still natural and organic to a large extent. And this has been practiced as such by the local farmers for generations. So in hindsight, it has been a blessing in disguise that the green revolution skipped the northeastern region. Conventionally, shifting or slash and burn cultivation, which is commonly known as jhum cultivation or rep shirti in Kasi, and aba oa in garo is practiced by many farming com communities. Natural and organic farming practices are being followed at many places in the state, as a result of which Meghalaya is currently one of the lowest users of chemicals in agriculture in the country, using only about 17 to 20 kgs of chemical, chemicals per hectare of land. This is also mostly limited to vegetable crops. 
Today, organic and natural farming have evolved significantly as a sector, and information about new methods of cultivation that are safe for the soil and biodiversity are available for adoption. Efforts are in place to leverage these to maximize food production per unit of land, enable settled and sustainable farming. These efforts will also reduce input costs, meet the production requirements of the state, and increase the income of the farmers. Both organic and natural farming systems are non-chemical systems for farming, largely relying on diversity, on farm biomass management, rejuvenation of natural nutrient recycling, crop rotation, multiple co cropping, and efficient resource recycling. So natural farming are based on biomass mulching round the year, green cover, indigenous cow base, dung and urine formations in inclusion of all purchased input organic, biological or otherwise. So the state government is working towards meeting the demands of the growing population without compromising on the soil health and biodiversity of the state. With this objective, we acknowledge the role that organic and natural farming play and are working towards promotion of both. So the Meghalaya State Rural Livelihood Society has initiated trainings on natural farmings across the state. They have entered into an agreement with experts from Andhra Pradesh and have established 18 farming field schools and have also trained over 35 community resource persons who are further promoting and training and training farmers in the areas of natural farming. So far, over 475 farmers have been trained in natural farming and are practicing the same in 500 acres across 25 villages. Under the program, MSRLS has also set up 380 multi-cropping kitchen gardens. Further, the Department of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has submitted the Annual Action Plan for Natural Farming to the Government of India for its approval. If approved, the Department will implement the scheme as per the National Natural Farming Guidelines and scale up the area under natural farming in the state. Organic farming is the other alternative which is being promoted at a large scale. Currently, 32,000 hectares is under organic farming, and the government has plans to bring in additional 5,000 hectares by 2030. Much like natural farming, this farming system is also harmonious with soil and local biodiversity. Increasing productivity is good for health of the consumers and producers, and also fetches better remunerations for the farmers. So the government's initiatives to promote organic and natural farming. The department is implementing the centrally sponsored scheme called Mission Organic for Value Chain De Development Northeastern Region, or the MOVCDNER, under which 28 FPOs have been set up and are practicing organic cultivation. The cabinet endorsed the Meghalaya State Organic and Natural Farming Policy on January 11, 2023. This comprehensive policy aims to foster organic farming as a viable income generating activity for farmers. It outlines crucial objectives, including capacity building, technological development, and augmenting farmers' income through training, value addition, and market linkages. The establishment of the Meghalaya Natural and Organic Society for Livelihood and Innovation in Agriculture marks a pivotal step in our journey to being a leader in organic farming in the country. MG 
NOLIA will act as a dedicated entity synergizing efforts across departments to propel organic farming and natural farming. This society is set up to play a pivotal role in realizing the objectives set forth in the state's organic and natural farming policy. While the state believes in the principle of organic and natural farming, we are also cognizant, cognizant of the challenges faced by other northeastern states that have taken drastic steps towards promotion of organic farming. A blanket ban is used on the use of chemical pesticides and fertilizers put farmers who are using chemical inputs at a disadvantage. Therefore, the government's approach is to first set in place systems that help farmer transition to organic and natural farming and simultaneously face away the use of chemical inputs. We are building the state's capacity in production of bio inputs so that our farmers are not reliant on costly inputs from outside of the state and don't compromise on the yields. This will ensure lower cost of production and thus farmers will, farmers will be able to compete with inorganically frame produce from outside. At present, the state has the capacity to produce over 70 MT from three bio input plants and the same is being scaled up. Through various extension services and state and central schemes, the farmers are being trained in good agricultural practices for natural and organic farming. The objective being to build the capacities of farmers to transition and adopt these systems of agriculture without compromising on yield and quality of the produce. The government is also taking active steps to promote Meghalaya as a brand synonymous with natural and good quality produce. Produce from our state is being recognized nationally and internationally for its superior taste, greater oil content, and negligible pesticides and heavy metal residue. In the past couple of seasons, our pineapple and GI tagged Kasi Mandarin have grazed the shelves of malls across the Middle East. Pineapple from our state are being processed to be used as baby food in European markets. I would like to emphasize upon the stringent tests in place for any agri-produce agri to enter European markets. Our pineapples not only pass these tests, but even pass the stricter tests in place for the European baby food market. So preserving indigenous seed is an important aspect of agricultural bio biodiversity, conservation, and food security. Indigenous seeds are traditional varieties that have been cultivated by local communities for generations and are adapted to specific environmental conditions. The Department of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare plays a vital role in supporting efforts to preserve these indigenous seeds. The government has already attained GI, or Geographical Indication Tag, for Khasi Mandarin and is in process of doing the same for the Lakadong turmeric. So under the Department of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare, the Directorate of Agriculture promotes the preservation of indigenous seeds through maintenance of germ plus. It is important for us to understand that the government is committed to ensure that we protect our indigenous seed. There is a certain procedure that is prescribed, but I would not like to go into it because of the paucity of time. So in, the, in addition to the department's initiative, the Northeast Slow, Force, Slow Food and Agrobiodiversity Society, popularly referred to as NASPAS, has set up community-based seed bank project at various locations across the seeds, across the state. We have some in West Carm Hills, West Janty Hills, we have some in Rebhoi, we have some in East Khasi Hills, and we will 
work together with NESPOS to ensure that we collaborate with them to empower indigenous communities through what they call agroecology learning circles. So the third aspect that was brought up by the honorable member is the integrated paddy fish cultivation in the state of Meghalaya. Integrated paddy fish farming is the practice of growing fish in paddy, fish in rice or paddy fields by using the same area without impacting of rice quality and yield. Integrated fish farming provides the option for getting extra income along with the main crop, which is rice. I would like to inform this August House that in Meghalaya, this system of paddy fish culture was traditionally practiced by farmers in some parts of the state in a very small scale. Indigenous species like the danio, the channa, etc., were cultured along with the rice. The same is now being promoted by the Department of Fisheries under a flagship program called Meghalaya State Aquatic Mission 2.0. So far, over 100 hectares uh, has been covered under the intervention and the department is on track to scaling it further. Honorable member also asked what are the merits and demerits of, fish, of paddy fish culture. The integrated fi paddy fish farming allows farmer to get extra income and control insects which are harmful for the paddy. It reduces risks of crop failure and helps in controlling weeds. It, is, it also incentivizes the farmer not to use pesticides, thus promoting natural farming. The demerits of the system being that it is more resource incentive in terms of investment, water and labor needed for the cultivation. The other challenge being that most of the paddy fields are irrigated by common water chan channels and it is very difficult to check for water quality and pesticides. So in conclusion, I would like to reiterate that the government's effort are towards building the state into a leading producer of organic and naturally farmed produce. Active steps are being taken towards reaching this goal. However, at the same time, we are mindful of the impact that our actions can have on livelihood of our farmers. Therefore, we are cautious and careful in our approach rather than forcing the transition with top-down heavy-handed decisions. We are creating systems that build capacities for our farmers and create market space for them to sell their produce so that the transition can happen organically. I hope, sir, that the honorable members, both of them, are satisfied with my attempt to clarify on their queries. And with these full submissions, sir, I resume my seat.